while Pilates is a great way to strengthen your body and your spine. If you have scoliosis and you are a beginner, you could potentially end up in more pain if you don't know what is safe to do and what doesn't make your scoliosis worse. In this video, I will show you a few easy Pilates exercises that are great for your spine and safe for your scoliosis. So for this first exercise that we're gonna do, we're gonna need a resistance band or a yoga belt will work as well. And we're gonna start lying on our back. So just making sure when you're lying down, you are as symmetrical as possible, feet hip distance apart, Hips are in the center of your mat and then just allowing yourself to lie down on your back. Just taking a moment to get settled here. So we always want to make sure we're not tilted over to one side or the other. And then we're going to take our band and I've actually doubled mine up today just to get a little bit um, more stability, a little bit more resistance and also making sure that it doesn't dangle in my face. And we're just going to hold it up towards the ceiling. And we want it at about shoulder width apart, maybe slightly wider to see how this feels in your shoulders. And the purpose is that we're getting this connection into our shoulder blades here. So just notice this, especially if you've got one shoulder blade that tends to stick out. What can you do to allow for this to be um, flat down into the floor again and then again just hold it with a little bit of resistance. So exercises lying on your back in Pilates are great for scoliosis because we are in gravity and we just come automatically into a little bit better alignment. Good so we're going to practice our overhead arms from here and the purpose here is to strengthen the shoulders or create that shoulder stability while maintaining a neutral spine. So I want you to start bringing the arms up over the head, but your job is to make sure you're not arching the spine when you do this. So you're gonna just go check where you can go safely, comfortably, without anything else changing, and then bringing it back up towards the ceiling. So again, let's take the arms up over the head. With that little bit of tension, then you can feel what's going on in the shoulders and then coming back up again. Good, so if you were doing this without the band, you might be able to touch the floor, but really the purpose, especially in Pilates, is not to go to your maximum, but you want to do it um, with as much integrity as possible and stability. Good, so let's do a couple of more bringing in the breath. So we're gonna exhale, to bring the arms up over the head and just explore how far can you take it without losing that stability. Good, and again, we exhale to bring the arms up over the head and then we're gonna inhale to come back. Good, let's do one more here, maybe a little bit more tension on the band so you can feel a little bit more of that shoulder activation. Good, and then let's come back up towards the ceiling and let's put the band to the side. Good, so next we're gonna bring our attention into the hips a little bit more. We're gonna work on a little bit more of that core stability, core integrity. Let's take one leg up into what we call a tabletop position here with the shin parallel to the floor and the knee directly over the hip here. Good, and then from there, we're gonna take that leg into some little circles here. So just some little circle. Imagine you're just kind of circling, drawing a circle with the knee around the hip. Good, and your job here, again, is to make sure you're not moving anything else. So can you keep your, keep your hips really nice and level while you're drawing those circles. Let's try it the other way around. Good, and again, just notice, I notice myself now wobbling a little bit, um, especially around my lower back. I do have a very flexible lower back, so I always have to remind myself to keep it nice and strong here. Good, lovely, and then let's release the leg. Take a breath here. 
Just notice, especially if you start to, if you're getting a lot of tension around your neck and shoulders, if you work with other parts of the body, take a pause in between. It's okay. Okay, let's do the other side. We come back to that tabletop position. And Pilates is all about being really precise and being really exact. Now, obviously, sometimes it's difficult to know where you are, but it's okay to lift your head up and just check that your shin is parallel to the floor. And then let's do our little circles here on this side. And if you have scoliosis, you might find that one side is easier control to control than the other side. So I want, just want you to notice this. And maybe next time you practice this, just spending a little bit more time. Good, let's reverse the circles if you haven't done so already. And I'd rather you keep them really small and make sure you're staying nice and strong through the center than making them really big and wobbling all over the place. So this is where it's all about that control. Really, it's all about how you do your exercises. Good, lovely. And then let's release from here. We're going to do one more round, a little bit more difficult. Let's extend the leg up towards the ceiling. I'm coming back to my first side now. Now, if you have a little tight hamstrings, you might have to bend your knee a little bit. That's okay. If you can straighten your legs, see if you can straighten and see how that makes you feel already just engaging those leg muscles. You might feel your core and let's try our leg circles again. So now we imagine the leg is a pencil and we're drawing that circle up in the air. Maybe let's make it a little bit more, more bigger, sorry, a little bit bigger kind of, um, yeah, imagine you're drawing the outline of a ball. Maybe we're getting, coming a little bit more towards a beach ball now. Let's take it the other way around. Good. And then we're going to change sides. So let's try the other leg. Notice how that feels. This feels a little bit tighter for me on this side. We're pointing the foot. Keep the leg straight if you can. Otherwise, a little bend in the knee. And then let's draw those circles here. Just exploring, can you keep your hips nice and level? Can you maybe straighten the leg a little bit more? And then let's take it the other way around. Relaxing the shoulders, relaxing the neck while you do this. They are not involved in this at all. Good, let's complete this last circle and then release. And we're going to roll over to the side and we're going to make our ways into all fours. Good. So all fours position. We want the hands underneath the shoulders, knees directly underneath the hips. Let's think about lengthening through the crown of the head and the tailbone. What I sometimes see is that people end up in this slight kind of cat position with a really flat back. So we want to have, we want to respect the natural curvatures that we've got in the spine. So there should be a little inwards curvature in your lower back, a little bit of an outward curvature in the upper back as well. Looking down towards the floor, so we keep the neck nice and long, and we're gonna do a variation of our swimming legs. We're gonna reach one leg out, keep the toes on the ground for now, and then we're going to slide the leg back in. So we're going to alternate sides, reach the leg out, making sure the hips are nice and level. Imagine that you're balancing a tray of drinks on your lower back and you don't want the tray to wobble over to the right or the left. Good. So we're just reaching. Now, if you feel like you can control this, then maybe lift your leg slightly away from the floor. Just like with all the exercises we did, nothing else in the spine is changing because we're working on strength and stability here. Then bring the foot back down and slide it in. So we reach out through the leg, lift up, little squeeze of the glutes here, bring it back down, 
slide it in. Good. Shoulders stay away from the ears. We look down towards the floor. And this is a st great stability exercise. And it's also starting to get into those glutes, into those hips as well a little bit more. Good. Let's finish our last round here. Lovely. And then just release and you can shake out your hands. Roll some circles with the hands around the wrists. Roll your shoulders. So all of these exercises are great to create stability and start to strengthen your spine. But we really need to build up that support system and strengthen, building up those muscles that wrap around the spine here to give us the maximum amount of support. For that, core strengthening is absolutely essential. So make sure you watch this next video here where I'm sharing the best beginners-friendly core exercises for those of you with scoliosis.